Hi, welcome back to Bobby's Viral Friends. Uh, I know we're all going through a lot, but thank God we're here together today with some special people, very special people. First of all, I'd like to introduce you to a man. You might have seen him on Saturday Night Live. Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn. Uh, you've seen him on, on Broadway in an Irish wake. Long story short, uh, he's had a book out called The Coloring Book. Netflix special, Red State, Blue State. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mr. Colin Quinn. Hey! And my other guest, ladies and gentlemen, she's an actress, she's a producer, <laughs> she's a writer. She's got her own Netflix special. She's taught me a lot. She's a go-to comic that we all love to be around. She's very funny, very funny. Please welcome Lynn Coplitz. Hi. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Gordy, stop. I just want to say this to my two comic buddies. I want to say this. I haven't been home for four weeks in 40 years. Uh, I haven't, but now I'm home. You know, we're used to holding up a mirror and showing the audience themselves. And through our words and our comedy and our styles, we, we teach them. We make them hear how we look at life and how they see it. And maybe they might change the way they look at it. I'm home now and I gotta tell you, I'm holding up a mirror and taking <laughs> myself and it's not easy it i'm learning about being a father with my kids uh, with my special needs daughter i'm learning about i'm looking at being a husband it's not easy it's not easy <laughs> what's new york like guys come on colin new york well i mean i'm down i'm further downtown lynn probably sees a lot more people than i see because i'm down by financial district and it's deserted. There's almost nobody out. So I walk in the streets. There's, there's nobody except a few homeless people. But right. in the village, is it like that, Lynn? I feel like there's more people. No. Out. The village is like 1985. It's like scary. There are people people getting mugged and stabbed. It is, it is, it's really wow. weird. And it's wow. you know how you know how it was like in the 80s, like where you had to be just you had to be a New Yorker. You have to be very like I'm walking here. Like that's how it is now. Like you have to be very aware and and the homeless people, God bless them. Like, I don't blame them. They're, they're just kind of forgotten. And just, there's no, you know, they, they're all hustling in the morning and at night to get to the pantry to get food because nothing's right. open. Right. And, oh. Oh. and people aren't, ha people don't have money with them when they're walking their dogs and stuff. So they're not, they're really kind of up against it. So I've been putting like coin, I put like, I take coins and spray them with alcohol and like roll them or put them in a little baggie and give them like my quarters. Because I'm just like, I don't know. I, and money's gross. Like, I don't want to touch money. No. You know, I can wash <laughs> coins, but like the dollars, I'm like, ugh. No, get a, get a broom handle and just tape them, tape the money to a broom handle. <laughs> and... That's hilarious. I got to tell you, I'm out here in La La Land. And these people, oh my God, they're walking in the streets. They have their masks. They're like, hi, hi, they're a little uptight, but it's la la la. Probably one of the biggest positives, guys, about all this. They're not like, oh, you know who got married? Oh, you know that one actress? Oh, oh my God, did you read People Magazine? That stuff is not important anymore. Everyone's yeah. on edge here. Everyone's on edge. It was really good. I mean, not good, but like, I felt like people were still very positive, but then about a week ago, it's like, like the extra bodegas that were open closed. Like my favorite bodega where I was getting coffee in the morning, it's just gone. It's just yeah. locked up. It was wow. open in the morning and not open at night. I came home and bawled and called my mother crying because I was like, it's getting scary. Yeah. But my favorite thing every day is at seven o'clock, no matter what, I run to the window, open the window. I mean, it's really queer, but isn't it? We do it too, we do it too, yeah. Yeah. You open the window and what do you hear? We all applaud the and everybody yeah. screams. People honk horns. Bobby in New York at seven o'clock. Everybody cheers. All the medical workers and oh, the essential, all the delivery so people. Great. And I see I'm, I'm making friends with people in the building across from me because we I've never seen these people in my life. But I wave to them every day. There's a couple that goes on the roof and they applaud and they wave and they kiss each other. It's hilarious. Same thing. 
it, down down here, people have started screaming like "Thank you!" Just <laughs> like it's really, it's and really sweet. It's great, and a couple of delivery guys have gone like this, like like they're like a parade every day. Bye. <laughs> And I don't know about you guys, but I thank everybody. Like, I'm at the grocery store. I'm like, thank you so much for working. I keep I over tipping it. I over tip everybody. I'm like, thank you. The guy who brings yeah. my laundry. I'm like, here's $10. Thank you so much. Like, I just, I don't but know what I would do without here, them. And here in California, when people have a lot of money, if anything, they're, they're home checking their bank accounts. What am I going to lose? What am I going to, no, give, give. Yeah. This is the time. There might, I don't think they get it here, and it bothers me. Well, but people are people are also, like Lynn was saying, like until two weeks ago, it's like, oh, I don't want to get the virus. Now people, everyone's losing their jobs. Everyone's closing their business. People are getting a little bit, you know, things get a little bit ugly. You know, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is not me. Right. You're right. It's the second part of it, not the disease. Now it's the after effects of, you know. You know, I'll go. I'll go for a run. I'll go for a run and, and maybe I'll just like <coughs> cough, you know, oh. just fun. You have a mask and, on? Oh my God, you look around and people are like, <laughs> of course, Bobby, what do you think? Yeah, what's wrong with you? You can't cough like that. Yeah. Nobody wants your crazy Bobby germs to fly all over them as you're running by. He's running with no mask, then he's right. coughing, then he's getting mad at these people and calling them snobs because they're running away from his cough. And he said he's, he's caught for like, hey, hey, what are you doing? You guys, how do you feel about not performing? Tell me, because I need help. <laughs> I mean, it's weird. I, don't yeah. you think it's weird? Oh, yeah. God. We, we would normally, like here, if I'm working on something right now, I'd, I'd call up the uh, Hermosa Comedy and Magic Club and run down. Can, can Bobby? Sure, come on in. Or right. if I'm in New York, I'll see you guys at the cellar. Right, uh, uh, Colin, you have your own show there every Wednesday night. You know, yeah. stop and say hi. But yeah, we can't do that. No, it's over. I know. I'm working. I'm getting ready to start a writing job. Like I think we're all looking for other shit we can do. Yeah. Okay, you guys. I have a question. I've been thinking about this a lot. Speaking of comedy. How many shows I was going through in my head when this is over, when we have a vaccine, when everybody, all the TV shows that'll come out of it, like called quarantine and, and like, you know, there's going to be a, like a, like, you know, Grey's Anatomy kind of show. Right. The hospital from the doctor's perspective. Yeah. I figure Tony Danza will be in one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, every, Every punchline and every show is going to be quarantined. Even the shows that aren't about quarantine, they'll have right. a very special quarantine episode. They'll be quar this? Quarantino, and that'll be about a guy who's a drug dealer during the quarantine. To, to when this thing breaks, I think comedy is going to be better than it's ever been before. Not that it's been bad. We've loved it, and that's it. And we need it now more than ever. Yeah, but who's going to want to sit next to each other? with a bunch of fried chicken wings and mozzarella sticks in your face and a bunch of people right. wedged in like this in a comedy club. We go to Jacksonville, Florida. They're walking around now. They lifted up the band. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the first time I put makeup on in over a month. <laughs> <laughs> Even for Gnome's thing, I was like, whatever. I looked like horrible. Everyone kept asking me if I had COVID. I got no pants on. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you wear tidy whities too. No, I, I did didn't. A, I had black ones on. Well, but I mean. <laughs> I did a virtual. I've had more of a social life like this than I ever had before this. Really? I did a blind date with a girlfriend and her boyfriend and their friend. Wow. He, wow. He to go into the kitchen and he had no pants on. He mooned us. What? It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. What the hell? He's on a and date. I didn't even realize what was happening. I literally fell over. Oh my Wait God. a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. This guy, you were on a double date and the guy was dating with no pants on? Yeah, he had like an apron on and he was cooking while we were all doing the Zoom. And he got up to check on something and he, he did it as a bit, but he turned around and he had no pain. He mooned us. Now, wait a minute. I don't know which is more disturbing. Going on a double date with no pants or cooking with no pants. Right, right. 
<laughs> it was a bit, Colin. It wasn't real. He was trying to be funny. Oh. Because he knows my act. He thought I was, you know, funny. <laughs> you know? Colin's wow. over there. What's in the food? What was in the food? <laughs> As a female comic, the worst thing about dating got like new guys that you've never met or that know your act and stuff is that they always want to like be be really funny like they're like i'm going to show you how funny right I am. right i know oh, the wow. funniest guys in the world i have to tell the guy like i know funny the funniest men in the world right like, you won't beat them <laughs> it would be better if you were just like clever and charming and not stop exactly stop. you moved yeah. me that was enough you gotta Do laugh. Stuff, exactly. Are you are you guys working on anything now while this is off? Like I'm in the middle of, hopefully in the middle of a new book. Uh, my first one did really well, and I'm in the middle of it. But sometimes I I find myself not inspired at all, and I just like what the let me go for a run. Are you in the, doing anything? I, I'm working. I'm, I'm I have three children's stories I've been working on forever, and I have them done. I just have to. Like they're all outlined and done in my head. I just have to finish typing them. And I just got a job once in a while for extra money. I, I, uh, you know, like I ghost write on books. I know. So I know. Wow. I'm going to be helping somebody with a book. It's fun. I used to do it for Joan a lot with like, they would bring me in. You got, I don't know if you guys ever did this back in the day. Like they bring me in to intro the chapters. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. make funny little things. And right. now I've started getting jobs where they're like, um, this this writer is really funny, but we need her to be hilarious. <laughs> right, right. What are you working on, Colin? I'm uh I'm working on a book myself. I'm almost done with a book. And it's about the 50 states, but it's the same thing. Like I'm trying to make it all, you know, it's like funny. Right. Every state I'm making fun of, and and I'm I'm in the middle of what Lynn's doing right now. I'm writing a little chapter summation for the state a couple of zingers to get people into that right, chapter you know right right do you find a difference between our performing performing comedy and writing comedy for sure well for me i feel like i'm actually in my act i'm not one liner funny i'm more like you know storytelling in my my own but when i when i'm writing on paper like that i find it's it's, it's when for other people i'm usually more punchline like a, like really? a joke really? a proper joke yeah interesting but i'm also doing it in someone else's voice yeah and that's what they think comedy is when they hire you you know they're like can we get some punchlines here i've actually been told that can i get a punchline oh wow <laughs> yeah sure because that, that's how we manufacture them they just come popping right off the top of our heads right. punchlines. but it is true that like i feel like when lynn you were saying they want the writers funny but they want them to be hilarious it's true that on muscle over the years you know what i mean like i know that what i would trust that because we because we've been forced even on non punch lines a punch lines compared to a lot of writers they write great funny character like thought type stuff but what we have to do because the audience is like this get to get to the laugh i want to laugh right so we're our muscles are so strong that even when you're writing something else you're thinking of something that's already, you know what I mean? That's, right. that's gonna be right. funny. Even if they don't want it, it's an ending. Right. Like a punchline, like an end right. that they can't say, you're just like floundering. Cause floundering got knocked out of us like all like 15 years ago, you know? <laughs> you, know what the, you know what they call it in publishing? They say you're editor, editorializing. Is that true? Yeah. Which means it's too many words. Get to the joke, bitch. That's what it means. Right, 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 right. right. Editorialize, yeah. I'll be I'll be writing I'll be writing and then all of a sudden I'm, I you know I'm a storyteller we're storytellers and I'll right. be writing and I'm telling the story and I said maybe I should add a little bit more or rush it up a little and then <clears throat> I'm saying okay that's enough I'll be back in a little while and literally go off and then come back and write again but I let them know how I feel when I'm when I'm doing it. right yeah you have to well I tried that on this book and my editor's like we're cutting that part out. I was like, why? It's good. It's good. Yeah. And she's like, no, it's not. And I read it again. I was like, yeah, she made a good point. <laughs> when I was doing, I was, oh, I was being a little, uh, a little uh, cutesy. And I don't think it really works with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also think 
I don't know if you've ever done this, you guys, but like when I'll hand in transcripts, like it's happened a lot at Just for Laughs in Montreal, but I'll hand in a transcript and they'll look at it and I see the look on their face like, this is not funny. And I'm like, yeah, because it's the way I say it. Yes. Right. right. No, nothing makes my blood boil, of course, like any comedian, when they go, um, could you write it out and send it to us? And you're fuming. Every part of me wants to go, no, no. But then if you do I'm it- I'm so glad that makes you mad because it always makes me, infuriates me. I'm like, infuriate. no, why do you need to look at it? What I'm not going to listen to anything you tell me. <laughs> right, right. And then you hand it to them and every time they're like, you might want to cut that part out. It's like, you don't know what you're reading. Right. You don't know what you're reading. Let me handle it. I've been doing this 100 years. Please, just back off. It's like some 28-year-old. And they're just trying to do their job. Right. Most of them aren't idiots. No. They're just people that, oh, I better... This isn't funny. It's making me nervous. It's like, that's going to be the best laugh. That's going to be the one line that everybody talks about liking. So just. But don't you think it's the same thing? It would be like us asking a doctor, can I see all those x rays? And they'd be like, do you know how to read an x ray? Right. No. Right. I need to see them all. <laughs> What's this thing? Should we be worried about this thing? That's exactly. fucking nothing. <laughs> exactly. You know, another big thing was, you know, we travel. I travel every weekend. So. When I'm gone, I'm alone in the hotel. And then when I come back, my head's free. I perform, I'm up, so I'm writing. I'm thinking, right. if they, oh, this will work here. This will fit in nice here. You know how we do that. Now I'm home and I have a, my wife and my, a daughter, special need, my special needs daughter. So I'm spending so much time. And there's a part of me that's feeling, I, I got to go, I got to go do my thing. I got to write. I got it. And right. I know, I know you, you just got married and the fact that you've been married a year, Colin, and a pandemic and you live alone, Lenny. And um, what is that like yeah. for us comics? Well, if, this was the, if this was, I, for me, I keep thinking to myself, okay, cause I really love the 1800s. I'm like, it's 1896 <laughs> and I'm a spinster and I'm by myself in the house. And I'm just, and I just think like that, like, what do you do today? So you have to do a little reading. You write a little letter, only I might do it in an email. I mean, for me, it's kind of nice because it isn't that different from life on the road and being alone in your hotel. Right, that's because right, I, right. I mean, not to get everyone upset with me, but as a woman, I am a little freaked on the road about not, I don't go out a lot. No, I stay right. because I don't want to make myself vulnerable. Um, I go to a movie or something, but I don't, I, it's not like I, I go like, I know male comics who just wander around all day. Like, I don't do that as much. No. So I'm usually inside a yeah, lot. Yeah, right. And look at, well, look at you. In New York, there's be a line in front of your house. For what? You're such a looker. Oh, my God. You're such a jerk. You're so <laughs> I'm such a looker, please. Yeah, I, it's what time is it? It's like two o'clock in the afternoon. I've got lighting all over this apartment. <laughs> like I, I was literally before you guys called. None of the devices are working. They're running out of juice. But oh, did I have time for the lighting and the pancake makeup? <laughs> Colin, what about you, married man, living home? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I still have plenty of time to, you know, work on my own. I mean, she's working from home. She works on a, like nine to five on her job. So oh, wow. from home, but I mean, I've just been, uh, like I said, I just sit in my room and then, and then write, you know, and then we watch Friday night lights. Right. <laughs> it's good. I never watched that show before. I've never heard of it. It's great. It's, a big... it's, a, it's, it's old. Yeah. It's like old 15 years old, but it's really good. All I have on during the day is like bewitched. That girl, I dream a genie. They all play in the background. Flintstone sometimes at dinner time, and I do. My shrink said that's smart because I'm doing the stuff that takes me back to being a kid when I was safe right. and things felt okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I do that. And I have a friend who watches freaking Cuomo in them all day long. I Hollinger, think it can't be good for your mental health. It can't be good for your mental health. Right, Hollinger, you listen to me, Hollinger. Right. <laughs> Donald Penobscot, um, yeah, Donald Hollinger. And I like the way they always set up that girl in the beginning because nine times out of 10, it has nothing to do with the show. They're like, who's going to clean this house? That girl. <laughs> yeah. Who's in quarantine? Me and that girl. <laughs> it was like the early days 
of premarital sex, and then suddenly the father's over there implying, Hollinger, I swear to God, if you're banging my daughter, I'll kill you. <laughs> I don't like that you're always the... here, Hollinger. Oh. And you know, it turns out in the 60s, the big, I didn't know this, but I've watched all these shows now, the big um, thing that men did to kind of show their machismo and put each other down was they always got the name wrong. So they'd be like, hello, Conan, instead of Colin. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Hey, uh, right. What's his name? Sloppy? No, it's Bobby. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah Bobby. Hi. Hey, Sloppy. I'm sloppy. <laughs> like, but that's what they always do. They, they say the name wrong. Like, that's their strategy. On every show, Dagwood, Hollinger. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, who's better than her? Dagwood. Dagwood. <laughs> Agnes Moorhead. Agnes First Moorhead. All, then. Bewitched had the best aunts and uncles and witches and warlocks, the best casting of all time. Look at us, look at us. We're all going back to when we were kids and how we grew up. What does that tell you? It, tell, it tells me that we all need this. We need a break to like laugh and remember when things were just easier. Right. And yeah. they weren't so scary. Right. And this is, um, it's really weird. And what I also find funny in New York is listening to the newscasters like they're like it's really sunny out today and i know you're going to be tempted to go out stay where you are oh, <laughs> like god. it's like oh god i know every time they give the weather i'm like why are they giving us the weather who cares <laughs> <laughs> when that that would be funny colin that would be so funny if you you could write new york one and say when it goes to the weather guy he should just go it's the same in your house everywhere right hey yeah where did you grow up len I was I was born in Long Island, in uh, St. James, Long Island. Okay. But I I grew up in Sarasota, Florida. Oh wow, wow! That was my last cancellation. McCurdy. What Sarasota? Uh, yeah, I was supposed to work at the with a, a small theater there. Last was my last. Oh. Day. Oh, you guys want to hear something amazing that happened to me? Sure. I'm, first of all, I'm 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 never surprised at some of the kindness, like Louis C.K. Um, paid us for gigs that were on the books, but yeah. had to get canceled. How nice. Then he just called it after his little special, or his little special, his huge special went up. He, I, I'm wait, it's, gonna, it's in the mail right now, I think downstairs. He gave all of us who've been working with him for two, uh, for the last two years, bonuses. Ah, just wow. randomly gave us all bonuses. But then I get a call from The Grove in Arkansas. It's, it's a fairly new club. I've been playing there the last, year and a half, two years. I love them, mom and pop, awesome place. And um, he called and sent me a note, how are you doing? We're offering all of our comedians who've been on our roster an advance. If you need, I, 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 would, I would more than like, you know, wouldn't mind at all putting some money in your account. Oh, wow. What I normally pay you, I can Venmo it to you. And then wow. we'll, put date, wow. we'll put a date on the books. I've never heard of a comedy club owner doing that. I mean, maybe you ask them and they say, okay, but I've never had someone just call me right. and say. I had, I had one corporate job that I had on the, you know, and it, they all canceled, but they sent me the money. They're all doing that, I think, most people. And I find that not, even Comedy Central paid us for the, uh, this week at the Comedy Center, uh, this week at the Comedy Cellar. I never knew you grew up in Sarasota. Colin, where'd you grow up? A, a little place I call Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> Although Colin has the best stories. Colin, please tell the story about with your when you had the fake badge, police badge. It was it wasn't it was me drunk by myself back 1979 or 80, but I had a mustache. I looked like I looked older. I looked I looked I looked like how I, as old as I look now when I was 20. Go ahead. I was very <laughs> I, I was very big. I smoked all day. I drank all day. And I, had a, I was sitting there with a piece of tin foil, so I shaped it into a police badge. <laughs> then I went to, I went to Times Square. I went to Forty Second Street, and I rolled up on these three young thugs that were like, you know, shady stuff in those days. I'm like against the wall. I throw them against the wall. They're like, you know, I look like. You ever see Nick Nolte? You ever see Q and A yeah. with Nick Nolte? That's what I looked like. But I was like 20. <laughs> right against the wall. Go like this. Then I go like this. I go nah. I'm playing with you, and I show them it's tin foil. But these kids, they must have thought I was really just a cop, and this was like my double mind right. game. 
<laughs> they're like, oh man, and they just walked away. But they, you know what I mean? They didn't. Uh, so two of them left. The third one I started hanging out with. It's a, that's another long story. Oh God! Because he goes, hey, we should start. He said we should try to rip people off with your bad trick. You know what I mean? He tried to like recruit me for his, you know, the new organization. The and you did it, didn't you? Didn't you do it? Well, we tried to do it, but yeah, I'm trying to keep. I'm trying to when I'm trying to keep this story. <laughs> I'm like, this story is so much funnier than you're letting it be. It is so good. Yeah, great. you're right. And guess what? That's what I'm saying. That's where it ended up. I was talking the other day how we used to choose things out. Do you remember, Colin? Of course. Eat, eat, meat, once, twice, three, shoot. Three, shoot. One, twice, once, three, shoot. Twice, three, I know. Shoot. Yeah, I talked yeah. to these people out here. They had, what does that mean? I go, yeah. you don't know they what say, that No, we say, Every time you're like late finger. Right. Right. We had two <laughs> one two. If it was a friend of yours, remember two one two. Always yeah, late finger. Look. Right. <laughs> you accuse everybody of late finger. And the truth is, I was kind of like uh I was guilty of late finger. The what? Late <laughs> wait, finger. wait, can I ask a question? Yeah. Did you guys watch Bobby? You and I talked about it a little bit. Did you watch the concert the other night? I watched some of it. Yeah. Colin, did you watch it? Yeah, some of it. Oh, I just, I can't get, I still can't get over um, Mick Jagger. Thank you. It's unbelievable. He was amazing. Right. But then you watch, then you watch Paul McCartney and I watched, uh, what's his name? Elton John. It was like, uh, 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 it's over. <laughs> I think Mick Jagger goes to, you know, Keith Richards started to get his blood changed in the 70s. Because I remember hearing about that. Remember? Back in the 70s. So I think Mick Jagger's been going with him to get his blood changed, only he doesn't do all that destructive stuff that Keith Richards does. Right, right. His Their voice sounds the same. Same, yeah, exactly right. the it's same. Like exactly the same. Right. But I also thought their houses, like Keith Richards looked exactly like I wanted him to look. Like he looked like a vampire. Like yes. he had velvet curtains in the background and, yes. and he had a candle lit and red wine. And I was like, that's what I want him to look like. He's wearing an old like yep. velvet coat. And then Jagger, I mean, they were just great. I thought they were wonderful. Me too, it blew my mind. I was working one time, uh, two years ago, I was working up at, uh, in Harris, up in Lake Tahoe. And uh, they asked me, they go, would you like tickets, Mr. Collins, would you like tickets to see Bob Dylan? I said, sure. Oh. So they gave me two tickets. I went down, massive crowd. The first, the band came out for 15 minutes. They were wonderful. The band. Then they introduced him. The time I was like, oh. he was terrible. I go, and I laughed. But oh my God, that's what I felt the other night watching Paul McCartney and Elton John. Aw, Elton John, I don't know. I didn't see either one of them. Oh, you didn't miss it. It was kind of sad. God, it was just saw, uh, yeah, it was sad. Yeah, it was a little sad. You know, I watch I watch some of the comics that are doing stand up on on during this period on Zoom and different places. Sure, and it's not the same. You know, sure, it's not going to be the same. I know, but yeah. I don't want to say to him, "No, don't do it. Just talk it out. Have fun with friends and laugh." You know, it's like you, the three of us right now sitting at the comedy cellar and we're at the comics table fucking around. Right, right. It was a little more decorum because we're taking turns talking. Normally we can <laughs> scream over Keith. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm shoving wings in my face. <laughs> Speaking of Keith, has anyone spoken to him? I spoke to him uh, an hour ago. Oh, did you? Okay, good. How's he How doing? How is he? He's fine. Oh, good, good. It's business. It's all business as usual. It's like I'll be watching TV, watching something, and I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, wait a minute, this virus is actually happening. It's almost like a dream. I know. I, I walk around and all of a sudden I go for a run or so I'll go down to the beach and all of a sudden I go, oh, I got a headache. Uh-oh, I got the virus. I got the virus. Ugh. Right. I have I have really bad allergies. And like I, I had I went and got just I'm loaded up on Claritin right now because I was coughing. And you know, they people look at you on the street like, I'm I'm now gonna kick your ass. It's like uh remember that movie Warriors? Right. Yeah. 
That's what that yes. reminds me. Of. Huh? Warriors come out and play. <laughs> play, yeah. I like this. I like this excuse at the end. They go, "Why'd you do it?" He goes, "I like doing things like that." <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole reason it happened. He goes, I like doing things like that. I don't know about you guys though. I've been watching movies and TV that I've never, like I watched all of Roadhouse the other night. Okay. Roadhouse is great. I never saw it. It's her. one of the worst, best worst movies I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. Oh, first of all, if, if you're, if anyone watching this is part of the Me Too movement and you really want to just make yourself infuriated watch <laughs> like they're just what? doing the most horrible like you're like oh my god what first of all that's wrong lynn kelly lynch is the top doctor in the movie so i don't know what your problem is <laughs> the guy like walks up to her and just grabs her by the tit i'm like this is awesome no. this is really horrible excuse me i haven't seen roadhouse in over a year but i'll tell you exactly what happened the guy goes, hey, do you want to squeeze my girlfriend's tit for $20? And he goes, sure. And he goes, I'll give you $20. He squeezed him. He goes, what are you laughing for? He goes, I don't have $20. <laughs> well, when he squeezes him, he's like this, like Bobby, the camera goes up close on him and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> like, it's like the worst. <laughs> and even Kelly Lynch, who's a doctor, but apparently she was, Ben Gazzara was her sugar dad. <laughs> By the way, speaking of Donna Karen Close, when I first did comedy in the 80s, Bobby was the headliner and he goes on stage all the time. I used to open, for, I was his middle act big a lot, many times. <laughs> Is that and true? Back in the 80s. And I was the middle act and Bobby would go on stage and he's, he'd wear Armani clothes. But in those days, nobody knew. There was only two designers, Pierre Cardin, and like Ole Cassini or somebody. Z but he wearing... Cavariti. Z Cavariti was the big one. <laughs> yeah. And he was wearing Armani. Even back then, he used to dress in these beautiful suits. Listen to you. Listen to you. It's true. You know why? You work for... One day, one day I, re I did a set over at uh, Catch a Rising Star. David Brenner called me over and he literally said to me, hey, people like you right away uh, when you get up on the stage. <laughs> But the way you dress, you got to remember, people are literally looking up at you. So if they're looking up at you, it's you have to be the example. So dress nice and let people. So when they, I was like, thanks a lot. And I always remembered that. Wow. What did Bobcat Goldthwaite say when he told him? <laughs> <laughs> but look at the comics we all know. Isn't it amazing? It's crazy. I know. In our world, we're circus people. We're calm, calm, you know, we're carny. I love it. I love it. I think, I think, I always tell people, I think we're like military. Like we're all like, whenever anyone says to me in interviews, like, what's it like being a female comic? I'm like, I'm only a female comic to the people who ask me what it's like being a female. I'm like, to my comrades in comedy, to the guys, I'm, I'm a comic. Right. I'm not a female comic. Right. Our differentiation is, are you funny or not right. funny? Right. That's, what, that's what we care about, don't you think? Yeah. I, I've never yep. known a comic who cares yeah. about anything other than, it, oh, is she funny? Right. No, right. okay. Like, it has nothing to do with yeah. being a female, it's funny but, or not funny. But makes me crazy if we go out for dinner with other, or we're invited somewhere and Jill, my wife says, come on, Bobby, you never go, let's go. And you listen what people talk about, and you're, and yeah. in my head I'm going, I got to get the fuck out of here. This is crazy. Yeah. This is crazy. Every time. You know what I mean. Sure. You know what I've, you know what I've actually done? This is one of the things I, that's wrong with me. Like, I've been thinking. I've been spending time thinking, like, where can I better myself? Turns out I'm not as smart as I've always thought I was. <laughs> and um, my voice is really grating. But <laughs> one thing was I went out one night with friends recently, before this started, and I literally said to somebody, that's why when this happened for me, I was like, this is God telling me I need a timeout. Because I told somebody, they told the story and I go, you know, that'd be funnier if you did this. Like I told them how to tell their story, funnier. An average person? Yeah, just a fucking civilian trying to tell a story at dinner. Good, good. 
That's why I rewrote the story for them. That's why I didn't yeah. mind that separation thing. Because that's when you can go like the people, get the fuck, move over, get out of here. You know? Yeah. I'm like, you got five minutes of, of setting up that you don't need. It'll be so much funnier. <laughs> <laughs> but you did him a favor. All we really need to know is you work a very boring job. Just start with that. Right. And get into I'm still amazed how mo most people, their discussions or it'll end up coming to about money. And I, you know, look at us. When we all started, we didn't have a penny to our names. But what we did have was something inside our hearts. And what we always knew was the cream rises to the top. And shit floats for a while, then it sinks. And we've all become the cream. Uh, the cream. Thank God for that. Well, we're all hustlers too. Like for right. comics, it's not whenever things are like rough. That's why I say we're like military. Like something like this happens, we we what we do, and we've all done our whole careers. We adapt. Right. We adapt right. quickly. Just like we'll adapt to this, and we have. And by doing this, and especially with you two guys, I I think it's wonderful. Because I woke up today, and the first day, my head was a little down, and it hit me all about this when before I was trying to be the example and do the right thing and having fun and making other people. But then it hit me this morning. So to me to sit down to do this with you guys, you really helped me. It really helps to do this. And I wanna, and I wanna thank you guys. I do, from the bottom of my heart. I wanna thank you guys for joining me on Bobby's Viral Friends. And where, by the way, where, Colin, where can people look you up and know where you're going to be and or how can they get in touch with you or people could see me in a Manhattan area hospital in the next month probably and um are after you... that Greenwood Greenwood Cemetery He's kidding. Len where can people see you or get in touch Instagram all that I'm supposed to ask this yeah my, my Instagram it's all funny Lynn too okay and that's how, and it says the real Lynn Coppets. And so that's the best way to, to see what's going on. I have a website, but like people run it for me. I never know what's on it. I, <laughs> Look at us. Look at us. I'm the same way. I would, I would be farther along if I put any like active, like, like somebody said to me, do you have a card? I'm like, no, that would show a real interest in my own career in life. Right. And you can follow me online at bobbycollins.com and at the Bobby Collins on Instagram. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to Bobby's Viral Friends on Spotify, iTunes, or Google Play. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Hey guys, I don't want to take any more of your day up, but Colin, Len, thank you so much. This was Thanks, fun. guys. This was fun. And Good thanks, to see your faces. Love you guys. Love you guys. Love you. Bye, Len. Thanks. Bye-bye, guys. Be safe.